Look, I understand what you're saying. I get it, and I hear you're upset about it, but there's nothing TCI can do about it. You know, I mean, why don't you call the production company and then tell them that you disagree with the outcome? Yeah, I mean, there's a, what you're saying is ridiculous, okay? There's no way, it's already out in movie theaters, so there's no way the production company is just gonna do a re-release and have it where King Kong wins. That's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna have Godzilla getting killed by King Kong. I mean, historically, Godzilla has always been a winner and King Kong has always been a loser. Uh, yeah, I can prove the point. I admit on Skull Island, he may have taken out a few mediocre dinosaurs and maybe a few birds, but historically, King Kong is a loser. I mean, he gets himself taken out by chloroform. Godzilla would have never put himself in that position, ever. And then, let's top it off, King Kong is not even in, Mer in America for a week, and he's doing a Peter Pan off the Empire State Building. For what? For a woman? Well, yeah, I admit she was beautiful, but still, Godzilla would have never taken himself out over anyone, including a beautiful woman. You know, this whole conversation is just ridiculous. So I don't have time. I've got a YouTube video to film. I have a company to run. You need to just let this one go, man. I'm just saying, just let it go. No one's gonna change. And then what, we're gonna throw 80 years of peace between Japan and America out the door by killing off Godzilla? That's just not gonna happen. It's irresponsible of you to even assume that's gonna happen. So look, I gotta go. I'll call you later. All right, bye. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the channel. So every day I get a lot of emails and text messages and people asking me about building and where they should start if they're gonna you know, buy some land, they wanna know what are their first steps. So I thought I would take a moment just to go over where we actually got here on Dustin's project. Okay, because there's a lot of stuff that you really need to know before you get into land acquisition. All right? Um, I won't cover everything for custom homes and all that right now. I'll just talk about what happened here on this lot and why we have to do and go through all the steps that we're doing here. So one of the very first things you'll notice if you've been following along on our channel, we had to go down 10 feet here, right? We had to put GeoGrid. The reason for that was because we need to stabilize this, this soil, all right? We had to have a suitable buildable soil to put this big garage on because this garage is gonna be about 3,200 square feet or 3,000 square feet, whatever Dustin decides. So in order to accomplish that, there are a lot of steps that had to come first. So let's go back to the beginning of when Dustin and Tiana first bought the property. So we knew there was a house here already, so we already knew that this was zoned residential. However, one of the very first steps that I had them do was contact the city just to see if they would allow them to build the barn. And the city said, yeah, you guys can go ahead and build a barn, build a garage, whatever you want to build there. So that was the very first step. The second step, after we put in the septic system, if you followed along on our channel, uh, you saw we had to put in a new septic system because when they moved in here, they realized quickly, we realized they had a failed system. So we put in a whole new septic system and there was a lot of work that went into getting that approved. But for this lot right here, the very first thing that we did was we called out our surveyor, Tim. And Tim came out because it's a requirement. When we submit a plan, a grading plan, to the city, they want to see the boundaries. They want to know everything about what's going on around the property, where the drainage is, and not just that. We had to survey 100 feet outside the property line. We have some houses up here that were within 100 feet of Dustin and Tiana's property line. So we had to survey the height of those foundations on those uh, structures. We had to survey and bring them a topo map to show which way water flows off the neighboring properties onto their property. So that's one of the very first things that goes into, you know, coming up with a precise grading plan. So Tim came out here, they surveyed the property. Then they coordinated that with my civil engineer who draws the grading plan. So before the civil engineer 
could put all the work he needs to put into the grading plan, we had to have soils reports done. Okay, it's just, they come out here and they core drill into the ground. You know, they did it several times. They went down to different depths at different locations. They core down into the ground and then they check the density of the soil. Now, we knew the soil was a really good building soil because it's decomposed granite. It doesn't get any better than that. However, a couple of things they realized real quick was down below this soil from its native uh, level, down below is liquefaction taking place, all right? The best way for me to describe liquefaction to you guys is take sand on the beach, right? Water goes through it really quick, right? It percolates. Decomposed granite is one of the best soils for percolation, for septic systems. Because when you flush the toilet, that water goes down, goes into the septic tank, then it goes out the waistline down into the leach field. And what needs to happen is it needs to percolate into the ground. You don't want that water sitting on top of the ground inside the leach field because then the water will pile up and then the field fails. So down below here at a, at a depth of about 10 to 15 feet, they determined that liquefaction was taking place. That's where the water percolates through the soil. And then it gets down to a clay-like substance or a hard pack and the water stops, okay? So when that happens, it stays very wet down there and the water starts building up. Now all that soil on top of it is like floating on quicksand, okay? So no matter how much we compact up, up above, it wouldn't make a difference because down below is liquefaction, okay? Look at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right, they built that thing and it was on stable ground, but then it started sinking. That's liquefaction, that's what happened there. So, same thing with this property right here. So what we had to do then was soils engineer, geotechnical engineers, they all came out, determined, they came to me and said, hey Paul, you need to go down 10 feet, right, which is called an over X, stands for over excavation. So, we took the native soil and we over X down to 10 feet. He said, from that point, you're down to where liquefaction would take place. We need you guys to start bringing that soil back in, lay geogrid, which I covered in the YouTube channel, put geogrid for soil stabilization and start compacting every foot and put geogrid every three feet. All right, so that's what's taking place here now. So we had soils engineers that had to determine what they needed to do and what we needed to do to make this a stable lot for building. We had a civil engineer who had to come out and he had to draw a precise grading plan that depicted all the contour lines, that's the different elevations of this property, all the way around the property line. That shows, you know, which way the property's sloping. It's just an aerial photograph, basically. It's an aerial representation of the slope and contour of the property. So he drew his precise grading plan. And then he put, as a civil engineer, what he recommended we do in conjunction with what the soils engineer, the geotechnical guys recommended to make this a suitable lot to sustain Dustin's 3,000 square foot garage that's going here. So that's what took place. Permission from the city first. Had the surveyor, Tim, come out, survey the property, depicting all the boundary lines survey everything 100 feet outside the property, showing which way water's going to flow because we're gonna be disturbing, disturbing uh, native ground. Soils engineers come out, core down into the ground to see the consistency of the soil. We start grading, we do an over excavation per the recommendations of the soils engineer and the civil engineer. We lay geogrid for slope and soil stabilization. It just holds the dirt together, right? Compacts into those little squares. Now we're gonna compact all the way up. And as we're doing that, we're gonna end up with about 15 to 20% shrinkage. Because before, the soil was very soft. When we were digging down, it was the same consistency. It just wanted to kind of cave in on itself, right? We need hard ground. We need compacted ground up to a compaction rate of at least 92%. We're at 99% in most places. So Bob, our soils engineer, every time we do a lift, a lift is when we move new fresh dirt in and then we compact it with the vibratory. That's considered a lift. Every time we do a new lift and compact, Bob comes out 
he sticks a probe in the ground and he tests the consistency and he tests the compression strength of that soil. And we're at a compaction rate at 99%, which is outstanding. So those are a few of the things that took place just on this lot for a garage. Okay, so we're gonna do our lifts all the way up, but as I mentioned, we're gonna have shrinkage of about 15 to 20%. So what we're going to have to do is probably cut down that hill that you see back there and take some soil off that hill because we're gonna be short soil, right? If you take sand and pour it in a bucket, it fills up the bucket. Now dump water on it, push down on it with your foot. That's shrinkage. So as you're compacting, it's becoming more dense and we're losing height on our pad. And we have to have a certain elevation at completion for proper drainage. So that gives you an idea of what takes place here. Now over here near the road, you can see where they're watering and Bobby's digging down right there. That's a keyway that has to go in there. All right, we've got to dig down 10 feet right up against the road because that's the highest point of Dustin's graded pad is going to be down there on that corner. We have to dig down 10 feet and then we need to dig a big four foot wide, a four foot deep by 12 foot wide trench into the ground and compact that trench, okay? When we compact that trench, it's a keyway, it's a squared off keyway. We compact it up to 94%, 95%, 99 probably. And then it keeps that slope from wanting to slide downhill. That keyway locks that slope in place. So that's what's happening over here now. Bobby's digging down for the keyway. Mikey is moving all the dirt from there because we need a place to put it. And we still have to do two more lifts over here and one more row of geogrid. We still have two rows of geogrid to put on the far side, but we will bring all that soil off the top of the hill and compact in there. So as you can see, there are a lot of moving parts that go into projects in California. And the reason for that is because we are an earthquake state. Okay, things move around out here and they shift around. After the Oak Ridge earthquake a long time ago, you know, they came up with new rules and regulations and codes that we have to follow. And this is it. Most people come by here, we get a lot of lookers come by, and I get hundreds of emails about why do we have to do so much because it's just a garage. This is the reason. We're an earthquake state. We've got to make sure that things stay where we put them. Okay, so if you've been watching my other projects, we covered hardware and all the engineering that goes into structures when we start building. It's the same here. Most other states in the United States, if you bought a piece of property, you could call us up and say, hey, we want to build a garage, we would come that day and start building. I mean, most states don't even require a civil engineer grading plan. So this is California. This is what it takes to build here in California. So hopefully this answers a lot of your questions for you guys that are emailing me and, and texting me on a daily basis, right? I got an email just this morning. You know, we need information. Just like when you go to the doctor. If you walk into a doctor say, hey, I hurt, and don't give him any other information? Is he supposed to just say, oh, okay, well, let me give you something for that. It doesn't work that way. There's a lot of information that we need to know, so as a general contractor, I ask those questions, right? And I'm hoping you as the owner, if you're building, you have the question, you have the answers to the questions I'm gonna ask. So somebody emailed me this morning, and their exact email said, we wanna build a house, how much do you charge? Okay, you guys see how that question that they're asking me is missing a little bit of information you know just for an example okay well are you gonna go with granite or are you gonna go with tile are you gonna go with a level 5 finish on your uh, drywall or are you gonna go with a level 1 finish are you gonna go with tongue and groove siding or are you gonna go with stucco are you gonna go with a Santa Barbara finish stucco or are you gonna go with a light sand stucco are you going with concrete tile roof or are you going with clay tile roofs or are you going with shingle tile roofs there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, okay? Before I can just say, oh, well, here's how much it's gonna cost to build. So you guys see what happens when you buy a piece of land. How about this? Before you even buy a piece of land, this is what I recommend to everyone that calls me that wants to build. Let this right here be your very first step. If you find a piece of property that you want and you, love it and you want to build a house on it how about do this contact the owner and say we're really really interested in the property 
Uh, however, we would like for you to get a perk test done to see if it's going to pass a perk test for a septic system. Now this only takes place if you're putting in septic. If you're on sewer, it doesn't matter. Okay, and the reason I bring this up to you is because recently we had a client that we're gonna build for. You'll see the project, we're gonna start it in about two months. I told them to do this. I said, look, go to the owner, tell them, yeah, we'll put the lot in escrow if it passes a perk test. Perk test is about $1,800, sometimes $2,500, depending, depending on what they have to do. And that's just to determine if the soil percolates for a leach field. So they didn't do that. They went ahead and put the property in escrow and they bought it. They paid $450,000 for the two acres. Well, they called me and we sent out a guy to go do a perk test. I sent my guy out there and it didn't pass a perk test. So now it needs an advanced treatment system, which has a starting price of about $40,000. So had they gone to the owner beforehand, before they purchased the lot or put the lot in escrow and said, hey, we're interested in the lot. If you do a perk test, then if it passes, we'll buy the lot and then we will pay you back for the perk test. That way they were covered. Instead, they bought the lot. It didn't pass a perk test. It can only have an advanced treatment system, which is very elaborate system, starts at about $40,000. Can go up even higher than that. So would have saved them money right off the bat, or maybe they would have cons considered their other options and that wasn't really in the budget to buy that lot. Because right off the bat now, they bought a lot for 400 and I think it was 470,000. And now, before they can do anything, They've got another 40,000 that they have to put into that minimum to get a septic system. So these are the questions that I hope I've answered for you guys that email me every day. What is my first step if I wanna buy and build? That's it right there, okay? You gotta get a plan drawn, you gotta get permission, you gotta find out what your zoning is. Is it commercial? Is it multi-use? Is it residential? You have to have soils reports done. You need civil engineering to come out. You need surveying to take place. A lot of other things. But that hopefully answers some of the questions that you guys have had for me. Like I said, I get hundreds of emails a week. Okay, we've been in this business for over 40 years. So that's it. Hopefully, you guys learn something by watching this project. That'll help you with your project. Have an outstanding day.